I think, uh, like Johnny says, moving from pl changing places, it, it's it's very difficult. I, I I think that when when I was a, a young teenager coming to Canada, it was very difficult because again, you you don't know how to speak the language. You you as a teenager, it, friends are very important, and they were left behind. So it was also very new and it was very difficult. And education was just almost destroyed because, um, for, for me, because in, in those days, they didn't have English as a second language education. Uh, in, in the small school that I went to, uh, their basic thing was that this, they put me in grade four, and because I couldn't speak and I couldn't do anything, and, and so they they were teaching me how to read, and they, again they didn't have the teacher to do that. So this other child, who was my classmate in grade four, who was probably maybe eight or nine years old, and I was thirteen years old, uh, he took this book. And in those days, the reader was called Dick and Jane, fun with Dick and Jane. And, uh, and he's trying to teach me how to read. And it didn't go very well. So what I did instead, I, um, I went and bought comic books, because comic books had pictures, and today they call them graphic novels. Excellent tool. And I could then, because they were very similar, I could read and I could see the picture and I learned. And then I would go to the movies. Doesn't matter what it showed, I would go to the movies three times a week. And very quickly I learned how to speak English. My, my um, writing and spelling was, is still terrible, <laughs> but I missed out on that. And so for me, I, I almost stopped being educated uh, in grade six when I left Denmark because I lost after that and when I was about 15 years old and I was still floundering with all that I just quit went to work told uh, people that I was 16 years old and I went to work at Eaton's in a at putting price tags on clothes and then I worked in the in the store but uh, yeah so I didn't I just stopped being it actually going to school at that time. But when I was about 40, I, I decided to take the GED. I just challenged it to, and, and I passed that. So now I have a grade 12 education. I can do something with it. And then I went and took some uh, college courses. And then I took a, a real estate course and went and sold real estate for a while. And, and then I decided I liked the property management better. So I took a prop property management course and went to work for BC Housing in, as a property manager. So I lost all that education in between, but I grabbed it after my children were grown. I went back to school and got over that. So I overcame all that. I once had the opportunity of meeting Rick Hansen, the, the man that he had, um, he had an accident. accident. He had an accident as a young man and ended up in a wheelchair. And to to raise money for disabled spinal, people and spinal, spinal cord injuries. things, uh, he um, he wheeled in a wheelchair around the world. And and when I was working for BC Housing, uh, the, he came as a as a speaker one time. And what was so influential about him. He was world famous, but when we were introduced to him, uh, he wanted to know about me as opposed to himself, which I thought was very gracious of him. And one of the reasons that he was thanking us uh, as managers of BC Housing was that in, in BC Housing we have, in almost any new uh, thing, we, there's suites for people in wheelchairs. So uh, where they can afford to, to live, and uh, in, in the building that I managed, they, they had that as well. And it is very rewarding because that gives them a place to be. And he had 
lived in one of those units while he was going to university. So that was, he, he was thanking us, but I mean, he's a famous.